Today, Zwift have released some significant updates to their Zwift Hub Smart Trainer for both existing owners and those looking to purchase new. There's a lot to cover, so a quick summary. 10 Hertz race mode, improving the trainer responsiveness over Bluetooth. Virtual gearing arrives. There's a lot to unpack there. And there's a new Zwift Hub One bundle featuring the Zwift Cog and the Zwift Click device, allowing you to change gears virtually when using this. So there's a lot to cover. Let's get stuck into it. I'll first say that virtual gearing was one of those oh wow moments when I first used it. I come across a lot of bike tech and it's increasingly rare these days I'm actually impressed with anything. But this, I am a fan of. Now in my testing, it works and works very, very well. In fact, I've been riding and racing on Zwift with my DI2 battery unplugged for my rear derailleur just to prove to myself this is a truly usable option. Okay, digging further into the details of each of those new features, starting off with race mode, 10 hertz power updating from the Zwift Hub. Now, if you're familiar with Wahoo and how they do it with their Dircon connection, this is pretty much exactly the same. Making your avatar more responsive in-game, as soon as you push on the pedals, your power number will go up. But also in the reverse, as soon as you back off the power, your avatar will technically slow down a little bit too. It just makes things more responsive. Now in erg mode, the trainer reverts back to standard, I think, 4 hertz mode. You don't need this updating 10 times a second in erg mode. So do be aware, it is sim mode and you will need to use Bluetooth. This doesn't work over Ant Plus. To get this, you'll need to be on firmware version 5.20 or above and you are good to go. One thing to be aware of is how jumpy that power number will be with instant power showing. And also three second average at the moment is still a little bit jumpy as well. I'm sure that can be fixed in the near future. Next up, virtual gearing, allowing you to stay in the one physical gear and change gears virtually. Now for that, you will need the play controllers or the new Zwift click device. And it's the buttons on the outside of the play controllers that allow you to go up and down the virtual cassette. Or this can be placed anywhere on your handlebars to go up and down. These are Bluetooth only devices, so you will need to be using Bluetooth for these to work. How this works is the play controllers and or the click pairs to Zwift and Zwift sends those gear change commands to the hub. The controllers don't talk directly to the trainer. At this point in time, there are 24 gears, all sequential on one big virtual block, giving you a ratio of 0.75 through to 5.49. Now doing the quick backward math on that, it's equivalent to a 33 on the front, 44 on the back for the easy gears, and for the big gears, it's equivalent to a 55.10 on the back. So quite a spread of gearing there. Now there's some smarts built into the firmware that when you first start riding in your session, it will detect what size chainring you have on your bike by looking at your cadence and the flywheel speed, and it will adjust those virtual ratios accordingly. This means if you have a mountain bike or a gravel bike with a one by setup and quite a small front chain ring on the front, you'll still get those virtual ratios as listed. It is recommended that you use the small ring with this configuration if you have a double chain set, except in one scenario that only a few people will encounter, and I'll get into the details of that later in the video. Under some hands-on and real-world usage of virtual shifting, virtual gearing, and a preview of the Zwift Cog you can see there on the back of the bike, now, once I have the play controllers and the click all paired up, you can see the responsiveness of the power. Actually, I'll pair the heart rate sensor through the Zwift Hub as well, even though that hasn't been working that well with the Garmin strap lately. Anyhow, you can see the power numbers there updating quite fast. That's the 10 hertz mode. As I'm pressing the pedals there, you can see it just pop up straight away. It feels even more responsive in-game when you are riding along and your avatar does respond. Alrighty, let's skip OK on that. Now the settings for virtual gearing is over here under your preferences. Yep, right there, Llama. My settings. And right down the bottom there, if you have the play controller configured or paired or a click controller, you will have the option there for virtual shifting on or off. It is optional. And the controls, as listed there, the outside buttons will give you up and down your cassette, and you're good to go. Okay, in game and rolling along, you can see the gear indicator there on screen for Zwift, giving you an indication of 1 to 24, and the gear change response time is absolutely brilliant, and it needs to be for very, very good reason. I'll explain why in just a few moments. But I have this paired via the companion app. 
I found the response time when pairing via iOS, when running Zwift on the iPhone, to be really, really good. And directly to Windows Bluetooth as well is usually good. Usually. If not, a rebit would fix that. But you can see there, I'm clicking through the gears super fast, and the cadence is changing because those resistance changes are very, very quick. And that's what gave me the, oh, wow, this works uh, moment that I had when I first used this. If it was slow and laggy, it would be a frustrating experience. But with this configuration, it, uh, it really, really did impress me. Now, a little further down the road on Titan's Grove, and I'll show you why the gear changing responsiveness is so important. Right here, as I stand up, I grab a few extra gears, and that resistance is there straight away through the pedals. Now, if that gear change didn't take place as quick, then I'd be spinning out. This bike here has a 39 on the front and a 14, obviously, on the back with the cog. And the resistance was applied straight away, which made the experience just like riding a bike, or I guess just like what you'd expect when changing through gears when there's physical gearing. So that's one very, very important attribute of this setup. They did get right from the get-go, which was good. Now, final on-bike demonstration is a sprint. Now, typically on a smart trainer, if I'm in the 39 on the front and 14 on the back, I'll spin out a sprint straight away. You just can't provide enough resistance. But with this virtual gearing, we'll put it to the test of it applying enough resistance in this small physical gearing to see how it goes. All right, down some gears. I was able to top out at just over 1,100 watts there. And... It didn't miss a beat with that virtual gearing. As soon as I backed off and clicked down a few gears, it's a little easier. There we go, down, 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 instant change, and good to go. So as I said, the virtual gearing and virtual shifting is very, very impressive. Next up and related to virtual shifting is the Zwift Cog. Now this is not a requirement for you to use virtual shifting. Anybody can use that as long as you have the hub and the controllers to change virtual gears. But this is a, uh, a problem solver of sorts. It's a single 14 tooth sprocket wedged between two discs onto a free hub. Now with this plus virtual shifting, you don't need to worry about matching your 11 speed bike with an 11 speed cassette or switching cassettes for different bikes. You just install your bike, change to the physical gear that lines up and change gears virtually. The Zwift Cog will be an option to select when purchasing you and it will be bundled with the Zwift Click. The Zwift Click comes in a little box like that and has some O-ring adapters for you to mount anywhere on your bike. And it comes in the same price as what's now known as the Zwift Hub Classic, where you choose a cassette that matches your bike, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. This is just another option to choose with only one gear. The Zwift Cog and Zwift Click is available to purchase as a standalone bundle for US $59 or equivalent to wherever you are in the world. The full price will be, after this introductory period, uh, around $80 US. Now do note, this is not a requirement for you to use virtual gearing. All you need is some shifters or the click and you're good to go with your existing cassette. This is, as I said, a problem solver, which also works well for that single speed bike that I've got here in Alarma Lab. Okay, so on to some Q&A for this because I'm guaranteeing you there's going to be a lot of questions regarding these new updates to the Zwift Hub. Can I use virtual shifting with other trainers? The answer is no, not at this point in time. But Zwift are open to allowing other manufacturers to use their protocol. So we'll see what comes of that. Similarly, will virtual shifting work with other riding platforms such as IndieVelo? The answer there is no, not at this point in time. Again, Zwift are open for other manufacturers and other software companies to use their protocol. We'll see how that uh, progresses in the future. I do believe IndieVelo also have their own virtual shifting of sorts. What if I had the Zwift Cog set up and I use Trainer Road? Well, if you're grinding out an ERG session on Trainer Road, you're all good, it will work. I did a short ERG session today and it performed extremely well. What is the power accuracy like when using virtual shifting and or the Zwift Cog? Well, the Zwift Cog itself is uh, just another cog. There's no smarts built into this whatsoever. So when it comes to power accuracy, nothing really changes. This is pretty much the recommended gearing for you to be using in erg mode anyway for the best response out of the trainer. Now in regards to sprint accuracy and this one corner case that a few people may encounter, 
If you're doing sprints over a thousand watts, then the power accuracy of the Zwift Hub when using a smaller front chainring isn't within the plus or minus percentage specifications. It's gonna be undercutting you a few watts. Now, if you do have a geared bike, the workaround for that is to put it into the big ring for sprints if you want better accuracy, and then changing back for everything else. Look, this is an edge case, but it is something to be aware of if you're punching out some monster sprints. And lastly on my list, will virtual shifting work over Ant or Ant Plus? The answer is no. Everything needs to be connected via Bluetooth for this to work. Now, any further questions you have, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot with these updates, put them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to get some answers and get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, and finally today, just some commentary around what Zwift have done with the Zwift Hub and how it's changed things quite significantly. Now, they've taken a mid-range smart trainer, given it a budget price tag, they've added to it within 12 months, auto calibration, 10 hertz race mode, virtual shifting, and they sell it with a cassette of your choosing upon purchase. I think Zwift have shown the established hardware manufacturers what can be done when there's no reliance on selling you new hardware every few years. It's obvious that Zwift's goal is to get more subscribers on the platform, which I think has allowed them to squeeze a lot more out of the hardware that they're selling. So 12 months ago, Zwift beat the established market on price with a 499 smart trainer. 12 months later, they're beating the established market with features on that 499, well, 599 trainer. Look, if you're not a Zwifter, if you're not in the market for one of these trainers, you still have to respect what they're doing and what they're squeezing out of this hardware. It is a game changer, no question. What I'm keen to see is, how the market responds. It's gonna be very, very interesting. Okay, so any questions of anything we've covered here today, let me know in the comments below, and let me know your take on virtual shifting if you've tried it out. And with that, thanks for watching.